two models by me. This time we'll be unboxing the Hobby 2000's 172nd scale ME163 Comet. So we'll be doing this in the usual manner. We're starting with the outside of the box. Then the comments. Then the instructions. And then finally the sprues. So brief history about the um, 163 Comet. Started back in 1937. Uh, it was designed by combining the classic glider designs with the new innovations such as rocket engines. Yes, for those that are not aware, this is a rocket powered glider, not a prop plane, despite that, or a jet engine. The prototype first flew back in September 1941, quickly demonstrating its unprecedented performance, finally being introduced in frontline services in 1944 where it set an unofficial airspeed record of 700 miles per hour. That was unmatched by any turbojet-powered aircraft until 1953, nine years later. Armed with two female cannons, the main purpose was to shoot down enemy bombers and get away before the escorting fighters could react. Um, how the Comet would do this, it would use its rockets to get high enough in the air was short, uh, within a short space of time ready to intercept the enemy bomber formations by which time the very limited fuel on this thing um, would have been exhausted now turning the rocket powered glider into a regular glider emit one that's going about 600 odd miles per hour the ME163 despite being advanced for its time was not very successful having only shot down 16 bombers, despite over 300 of, of these things being produced. Having to use such a specialist recovery vehicle to tow them back to the airfield once they are landed on their return skid. You can see the return skid hiding there. Many of the losses were due to accidents, primarily from the rocket engine, which used a combination of seized off and teased off. Individually, not that reactive, but together, explosive. If during landing, any of these two fuels were still left within the tanks, or in the exhaust vent, and then with the bumpy landing, you're just using that skid on either the tarmac or a field, normally would mix these two together, and kaboom. Equally, refueling the Comet caused major, major headaches, as both fuel tanks and exhaust would have to be washed out. First tank would be filled up, then, the t then that tank would drive off, then the exhaust and the glider was then washed with more water to remove any spilt fuel, and then the second tanker would appear and fill up the second tank of fuel, and again, it's washed out. Um, that was not a quick process. The turn around on these things was not fast at all. On to the actual kit itself. Um, this is originally a 2000 kit by Academy. Being sold on a couple times be before Hobby 2000 picked up the mould in 2022. Um, this, is, this is interesting to see what the scores are like at the end, as we've had mixed results with Academy kits, so... Let's continue with the unboxing, see if this is going to be a really good kit, or not so good. First off, let's have a look at the outside of the box. So, uh, we got Hobby 2000, the product code, and a nice lovely artwork of the 163. Uh, tells you across the top what it is, as well as it being in 172nd scale. Um, Hobby 2000, give you nice like, side shots, you can see some more hiding down the side here. Um, not much else to the artwork, you've got a nice outline of the glider on the background, but that's about it for the front. Down the side here we've got a few more options, so we've just got Squiggly down here, uh, belonging to JG400 in 1944. Uh, same again, but in 45 this time, but 
for our more standard camouflage there. Even squigglier, again for JG400 in February 45. So they went from that camouflage scheme back to normal and back to squiggly. Or did they do that one, that one, and then this one? Hmm. Uh, the Soviets, I don't know if this is a what if design or was a actual thing, but the Russians did potentially, this is an idea what the Russians would have done with a two-seater trainer version. If you do know if that's real or not, let me know. On the side here, if you want to display the box this way around, you have Hobby 2000 again, ME163 and the front box art again in 172nd scale. Down the side here we have, pause if you want to read it, but basically it just says it contains a model kit for years of 14, 14 years old or over, and a barcode if you want to scan it. It's got the product code again. And, ow, oh, it did this. So unfortunately, if you like displaying your boxes this way around, yeah, you've got, got to tilt your head to one side to read it. And... Oh, that's it. Underside is nothing. On to the contents, or as I said in the intro, the comments section of this video. So let's have a look what we got in here. So we have one absolutely beast of a kit. This is giant. And we've got the instructions, decals, and then we have, you can't, okay, camera's not picking this up that well. Can you pick it up? There you go. So that is, these are masks for those that aren't aware of it. So you would put, take out these pieces and then place them over, like some, this one's the wheels. You've got some more wheels there. Or you've got the canopy section just there. Very useful if you're not if you're not too steady with the hand brush, or if you're using an airbrush, you can use this to cover the parts you don't want painted. And then, when you're ready, like you don't want to really paint the windscreen, um, put this on, spray away, paint away, and then when you're ready, peel this off, and your windscreen will be well clear, or well, canopy technically. And then let's have a look at the decals. So, generally quite nice. And they want to focus. There we go. Yep, so overall, generally quite nice on the decals there. And let's have a look at the instructions. Instruction time. So, typically it's an A4 bit of paper. This is about the second, third kit I've made from Hobby 2000, and yeah, they're all pretty much the same. They're folded A4 bit of paper. So, um, plastic coated one. So we got front box art again. Uh, we've got a sprue guide. There's your paint mask set for later. And all the colours, all the paints that you're going to need. Oh, it focused on its own. And conveniently, what they do, what a lot of other companies seem to do, it will give you a letter. So if you want to paint Duncan Gelb, I don't know why I've done that one, because P, I think it's going to be on the out exterior. It's going to be the exterior. I'm going for a letter that doesn't even appear. Oh no, there it is. So, yep. You, to paint that, you need Duncan Globe, or P. Come here, P that, and here's all the... Oh, there we go. Different colours. You notice some of these, like... Uh, Alcar 2 doesn't do AMT blue, 7 Blue. I guess that's one of the Russian paints. But yeah, it gives you a nice selection of all the different ones you need. Tammy, it doesn't do some of the German colours. Hmm. Okay, okay, let me put that back down there. All right, let's, have, let's open them up again. 
So, first off, we start with, okay, so a lot of this depends on if you're going to make the single-seater or two-seater variant. So a lot of this at the beginning, literally, I think it's all the way, it's all the same until you get to about stage five, which is the wings. So depending on which version you're making, uh, so if you're making one, two, three, and four, which is all the German ones, you do the one on the left, or the top. If you're doing the Russian two-seater, you do the one on the right, or the bottom there. So to start with, we put the control columns, plural, there is two, and that's not just a mistake, there is two there and two there on the trainer version, so technically four on that one. Not quite sure why, but yeah, so you've got the two control columns that go in to the, the tub there, and you've got to put the seat onto the backrest and backrest into the cockpit. That's the same for both versions there. And if you're doing the trainer version, you've got to do the same, basically, for the... Um, I'm guessing that'll be the instructor. Next step. So we come to the upper fuse large, where you put the instrument panel in, or panels, and that's all the colours you need to use. All decals. So it gives you the option, if you want to paint them, or decal them. Three decals, well I suppose it is quite a big kit. And then, yep, you've got to put the shelf underneath and the instrument panels in, paint the interior. Glue the bottom of the, or the top of the skid into the base of the plane, put the tubs in, the cockpit tubs, and then the upper side of the fuselage on. Next. Note the tail fin is still the same, the exhaust port is still the same, but it's the lower landing gear which is different. There is a difference there, so also it doesn't really tell you, it's like gives you an option here, cut that piece off or leave it, leave it on. It doesn't really tell you if it's for, I'm guessing that's landing gear up and that's landing gear down. Some clue as to what it is please, maybe? If you're doing the German versions, you just glue them straight in. Stage 5. Upper to lower wing. Twice. That was easy. Stage 6. Well, the fuselage. Glue the wings onto it. Glue the t two sides of the tail together. And then glue that on. And then the... What's known as the slats nowadays. Glue those on. And the P-tail tube. Next we come to the undercarriage, where you got the skid, and the dolly. So the dolly was only used for takeoff. Um, after, after a bit it would actually drop off, but you got to make sure you were high enough off the ground. So when the, the dolly hit the, hit the tarmac, it didn't bounce up and hit the underside of the plane. As a rocket engine, it was turned on, there was no turning it off, you, you were stuck. Hopefully you didn't go kaboom. Next, glue the canopies on, and then this kit actually comes with the recovery vi recovery truck tractor. No doubt, I will probably end up saying both truck and tractor in the same vehicle. So we glue the seat seat in and the steering wheel onto the column, and then I glue that in. Glue the steering wheel. I don't know what that wheel's for. I'm guessing maybe to up, raise and lower this bit. Not sure. We glue that onto C3 here. Ah, which is the underside. Okay, because you can just see that sticking out there. Glue the suspension and the wheels on. And all the assembly at the back. Now I think this did have two modes, so it's either these arms would be either be lowered or raised up, but it's only got a single one there. Also note the um, suspension, which has suddenly gone. There we go. Yep, you got the suspension there, so it goes on a specific way. On the back here, we got the paint guides. 
So they're marking one, two, three, and four. So that one was missing on from the outside, except for that's actually that one. So it wasn't missing. April 1945. Wow, that was used late. So yeah, you got all the various different versions than the Russian one, and all the different camouflages. Yeah, that's going to be fun, especially these two. And that's it for the instructions. I just need to get a pair of scissors so I can open up the um, sprues because they're in a plastic baggie. Sprue time, so yep. These all came in a nice plastic bag, so let's open them up. One, two, three, and the clear plastic, which is another little baggy. So let's have a look at the canopy quickly. So, canopy, it looks fairly nice. I started with this one first, and yet we need something to compare it to. But they look nice, the panel lines are, or the, uh, yep, there is something there, so, we'll come back on to you, see how clear you are, because at the moment it doesn't look all that clear. Let's start with let's start with the wings. Right, so let's have a look at the wings here. So I'm gonna focus because I know there's more detail on these wings than what the camera's picking up. There we go. Still not picking up, but hopefully you can see it, but if not, I'll just go through it. So we've got fabric control services here, which is really nicely done. Uh, quite thin quite thin panel lines, so you've got to be careful painting. Um, some of the other hatches as well. Overall quite nice there. Lower wing. See, quite nice again. Let's have a look. So we've got the two-seaters variant here, so let's have a look. Ooh! Ooh, that is nice. That's really, really nice. Oh yeah, yeah, that's nice. Skid looks really nice. There's the dolly. Trolley. I think I'll call it a dolly. Control columns. Yep. The other one, which again, very nice. Very, very nice. Not Academy's usual here. Let's have a look here. So we. Oh! Oh! You can pick it up! We have panel lines and rivets. Oh, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yes, I was joking about the size of this thing. This is my hand in comparison to the comet. This is a tiny plane. This is about the size of a First World War biplane. Made in Korea in 2000. Yep, to say it was 2000 kit. So Hobby 2000, you couldn't even be bothered to swap this out. Interesting. But the, the, the tail fin here, that is very nicely detailed. The underside. Ooh. Yeah, again, you can see the rivet lines, panel lines. Oh, ooh, that is nice. It's a nice kit. This is a very nice kit. Instruments. Is that, is that dials on the instruments? Hmm. 
my god! This is 172nd, and they have got... They've got the dollars, but they also got the needles as well. Oh my god! There's the tail wheels. And that's the single seater, there's the two seater. Which, again, very, very nice. Okay, can I get... There, you can see, that's got the needles and everything on it. I have not seen a... I don't think I've seen a 70 second scale where they've got the dot needles on it. They've got the dials, but they don't have the needles. Alright, so let's have a look with the canopy. But to be expected... Okay, not all that clear. But again... No, not that clear. But again, you're looking for a curved bit of... Well, okay, I was about to say glass, but it's plastic. So there's going to be quite a bit of refraction there, so... Yeah, that's going to be um interesting. Right. Let's have a look at the recovery truck and... Yeah. Where's the accelerator? Oh, I've been spoilt. Nothing. Okay. The wheels are nice. The tracks are basic. Hmm. The actual tractor frame is basic. What is that? Is that a focus? That's what that is. There we go. Not sure what that is. Suspension's quite nice. Arms are a bit basic. Hmm. That's a bit of a letdown. Okie dokie. So we went from a really nicely detailed plane to a not so detailed um, bonus. Right, let me box this away and do my final thoughts and scores. So, final thoughts. Um, the final thoughts I think is best summed up if I go through like what I think the skill level for this would be, uh, and then scores on the interior and exterior detail. So, skill level, this is between 1 and 5, 1 being beginner, 2 easy, 3 intermediate, 4 ex four, four experienced modelers, or 5 for like, expert master modelers. I would say this would be a 3. An easy 3, by the looks of things. Um, along the lines of like uh, the Airfix Spitfire Mark 1, for example, if you get one of those kits. Some parts feel like you may require a steady hand or a little bit of help if you're new to the hobby. Thinking more like the um, twin control columns there. But it wouldn't be an issue if you have made uh, a fair few kits before. Or even a few kits. So yeah, skill level 3 for this. Interior detail. Again, 1 to 5. 1 being... There's absolutely no detail. Five being extremely detailed. And for this kit, the Comet, well, for the Comet at least, some people could probably guess what I'm going to say for this. It's a five. I actually looked up the cockpit against some photos of an actual 163 cockpit and they match they are you, all the detail all the instruments and bit switches that you would see in the in from the photo have actually been replicated in the kit itself and the instrument panel with the dials actually have the needles on them as well. 
again, I don't think I've seen a kit that has done that. Not in 70 second scale, and where if you go larger, you would definitely see that. But 70 second? Oh, it's good. Uh, I got f with that cockpit though, or not cockpit, with the canopy, I feel like you're probably going to lose some of that detail because it's not that clear. But sorry, I didn't, I didn't come say mention this in the instructions, but you can actually pose the canopy open so all that detail is there for you to see or the spiders to climb in and make it their home. Right, that was for the comet. Um, now for the recovery tractor. Um, okay, there's only the um, cab. How would you drive it? There's no accelerator and there's no brakes. Unless it literally didn't have an accelerator or brake pedals. And they're like levers or something? But there's no sign of the levers either. So, where's the detail? Let's come with a seat. Not much else, I'm afraid. But, it's more, it, okay, it's basic. So it's more than being a one, which is bare bone, nothing. So I'm gonna have to go with a two or a bit of it. Which unfortunately, if we average out the score, the five for the Comet and the two for the interior, de uh, for the um, two for the tractor, that gives you an average of three and a half. But looking at the kit as a whole here, exterior detail again, it's nice, it's very nice. Panel lines are a bit thin, so and same with like those rivets as well. So, you've got to take that extra care when painting, either with the uh, good old paintbrush or an airbrush, because there's a good chance you're gonna lose that detail. And it's got the fabric control services as well. This is something that when Academy want to put the detail in, they can put the detail into these kits. And it is nice. It is, oh, it's a really nice kit. I love it. I've just alluded to you what the score would be. It's going to be a five. For the Comet. It's a wonderful little glider that thing is. Now back to the tractor again. Uh, the front wheels are very nicely detailed, same with the suspension. But the rest of the body? Mmm, that's lacking a lot of detail. It feels basic and bare bones, there's not a lot to it I'm afraid. So the saving grace I'm with the wheels and and she still looks nice. I'm gonna give the tractor a score of three. So that averages out at a four. So that would give you a total score of seven and a half out of ten. If we're separating out the tractor and the glider, look at them as two separate kits as opposed to the one full kit. Tractor would be five. I don't. I, that might be one of the lowest scores I've given. I don't think I've given lower. Somebody's going to point out an earlier video, but I don't think it's lower. Well, I don't think there's any lower at least. But the comment itself. I thought the 189 was a wonderful kit. I gave that one 9 out of 5, uh, 9.5 out of 10, if I recall correctly. The Comet, 10 out of 10. 
it's the, it's the first one since I've been doing these scores that I've actually given a 10 out of 10. It's an amazing little kit, it's an amazing glider. But one of the thoughts I've, one of the things I've thought of as to why the tractor scored so lowly or scored so low on its um, details was the comet was almost like, well, the comet is perfect. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's any of the tractors existing. So what Academy probably had to use are like drawings or uh, photos or videos showing um, the tractor in use. Which you can't, you can only get so much, you can get the basics, but potentially you're not going to get much else. Whereas there's quite a few of the comets still alive, still around today. It's like the thing to keep wanting to blow up. So that's probably why the comet's got so much detail, is because the Academy were able to get their hands on a real one, preferably at least, preferably hands on, and were able to take so much photos and get as much detail as possible from a real comet. Whereas the tractor, they probably didn't have any access to and went, we need something to justify the cost of this, here's a tractor to go along with it. But yeah, that's my that is my own thoughts and opinions. Uh, yours may vary, of course. Uh, so if you like the video, hit that like button. Comment below, have you made one of these kits before? Is there any traps to look out for? Or is it actually a really, is it a nice easy kit to put together? And then subscribe for more videos. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, bye.